प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समीपे रहो हमारिए ह नजर समीपे रहो हमारिए ह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our beloved Pujapad Guruji, Pujya Dev Swami, Pujya Santo, and all of you devotees, my humble Jay Swami Narayan. You know, in the world, when each and every human is born, there's two things. that that human does each and every human the first thing is that when that baby comes into the world it has a mindset that i survive in this world that i do not become destroyed but i survive in number 2 after one has safety after one has some kind of security in one's mind that Okay, my survival is now guaranteed. The second thing that this human does after receiving this body is that he feels that I should spread meaning spread throughout the world. My name should be known. I should be known. My reputation should be guided. My reputation should be known. These two are the only things that when a soul receives a human body and that baby is born these are the only two things that that baby does now just think about it if this is the only two things then what about all the things that we we're, were doing right now well the thing is that these two are in the base they can't be seen one is our survival number 2 is after our survival is guaranteed or satisfied to our needs in our mind number 2 is to spread throughout the world now if we look in a worldly stance meaning if we look towards the world perspective then what is survival well first and foremost surviving in the world is obviously having en- enough money having clothes on your back having food living underneath a nice warm place this is survival No, and the second part is spreading is getting a bigger job getting a nicer car getting a bigger house this is the second thing the human does but in the spiritual format what is survival and what is spread that's what i want to talk about today because it's not only as humans that we become born that we need only these two possessions these two foundations as a person in the world but we also need it in relig- religious terms as well well let's take a look today how can we spread our goal to survive and also how could we spread our goal to spread in satsang well thinking of goals when any person makes a goal in their mind they want to become something better than they are as at that standpoint that's what they do and through that goal through that low they try to become a little higher a little better a better person that's what goal setting is particularly but more on that topic as a devotee our goal should be to attain god that's our first and primary goal and through that goal other goals small or big are spread it's kind of like a tree trunk A whole tree is right in front of you and when you're looking at that trunk the main part the main roots then that root you can say is to attain god and then the smaller or bigger branches is to you can say become an ekantik a uh, hari bhagat or a saint 
or become a, a better devotee, to develop better manners as a devotee, things like that. These are smaller goals or bigger goals in particular. But our main goal is to attain God. Now, in order for us to reach our goal, we need some kind of guide, right? Just think about it. When you go to school, you need a teacher. Suppose that you go to school and they give you an algebra book and you haven't learned anything, you don't know even the whole subject, but they give you the book, you look at it, and they just tell you, why don't you just start learning from here and then we'll give you an exam in two weeks. Will you know how to solve the equations? Will you know how to formulate what kind of formula you'll need? Obviously not, because it's new to you. It's something that it's not known to you, but when a teacher in the form of a guide comes and he teaches you on that chalkboard or that smart board and teaches you each and every formula that this is what you need a squared plus b squared equals c squared all these formulas are given etc so on and so forth and after that you learn the technique the method and then you progress and then you learn the whole formula and then you pass the test but without a guide it's impossible along with that Let's think about, suppose you're given a treasure map, right? And you're just given the map and you it's just, the treasure is said that it's in this area, it's marked there. But you don't know how to get there. You don't know what to take in the form of mode of transportation. You don't know what kind of dangers are in the way. You don't know anything. You just know that the treasure is marked as a star. So what will you do? You'll look for a guide who knows how to get there and after that you'll take the guide and the guide will show you to the treasure my last example suppose you want to get from here New Jersey to let's say Russia Russia is a big country and there you want to get to the capital of Russia well how are you gonna do it obviously there's modes of transportation as a boat or maybe even on foot after you go on a boat ride or even a plane right suppose you choose the method of a plane well obviously after you choose a method of a plane it doesn't get done by buying a plane ticket going to the airport going inside a plane and sitting and waiting for it to take off if there's no pilot right in the same particular manner you need a pilot you need a guide who knows the way to Russia with that plane in order to guide that plane in order to navigate that plane there and land it safely and when you get to your destination you're there you're happy you're content in the same way in religion you need a guide a guide is always necessary and without that guide how can you attain God how can you reach Akshradam that's my question for today. Well, we chose a pilot in the form of a plane. We chose a guide in the form of a treasure hunt map. And we chose a guide in the form of a teacher. But in the form of religion, what kind of guide do you need? Well, he's the Ekantik Satpurush. Just like how we need a guide for everything, to attain guide, to attain God, to attain Bhagwan, we need an Ekantik Satpurush, meaning a God-realized, self-realized saint who knows the path, who knows the perfect method to reach God. And this is the only way that one will be able to reach the so same exact destination that he is at. So my question to you is now, we know that we need a guide in the spiritual form, he's a form of a saint, but now my question is that how do you know who he is how do you know that this is your guide how do you know that this is the saint that I want to choose to take me to Akshardham well that's a good question because just like how you choose a teacher in the form of helping you learn algebra just like how you chose a pilot to take you to Russia just like how you choose a guide to help you reach that destination for that treasure map. 
obviously you'll need a saint in your life to take you to that destination that we call bliss, enlightenment, or nirvana. Well, you've come to the right place, obviously. But in the Vachnamrut, Vartal 11 chapter, Sriji Maharaj has given a beautiful statement and an example stating that this is the way or this is how you should attain God. What is the method? Well, Bhagwan says that intense affection for the Satpurush, meaning this saint that I'm talking about, is the only means to realizing one's Atma. It is the only means to realizing the greatness of that Satpurush and it is also the means of having direct realization of God. Meaning, when you choose such a saint in your life, then there's three benefits. Number one, you realize God. Number two, you realize your own Atma. And number three, you realize that saint, how he exactly is. But, you know, we're just kids right now. So that's something that's out of our range. That's something that is more than we need to handle. So I want to make it easier for you. I want to dilute the formula as much as possible so that your life becomes easier in understanding my message. Well, again, I want to take a small statement from the Vachan to help you out. It said that if a person who possesses faith encounters the company of a true saint and develops faith in his words, then all the redemptive virtues, meaning all the virtues would develop in one's heart and vicious natures would be burnt away. Now I got a story for you today helping you understand this particular message. And it's of Gunatitan Swami. Now, Sadhguru Gunadhyan Swami always did vichran, meaning he toured around Gujarat and he lectured to many, many devotees there and he made many non-devotees into devo great devotees in his time. Well, at one time, Valero Varu and Siddhi Varu were two brothers who fought over property. Now, the problem was that one brother wanted one share of the property and the other brother wanted the other share. Now Valera Varu fought and fought for the property but his brother didn't give in. So obviously he lost and became a bandit. Meaning he became an evil person. He started to torment other people around the region. He started to hurt other people. He started to steal. He started to hurt malicious people like Jobam Buggy. So at that time Sadhguru Gunatinan Swami and his son Pandu were touring around that region and he found Valarovaru. Valarovaru and his gang stopped Swami and told him, showed him knives and weapons and guns and showed him, told him that drop all your belongings and give us all your possessions right now. Swami, he's, he was all steadfast. He knew that this was the works of Bhagwan himself. So what he did was, Swami, he stayed calm and he looked into the eyes of Valerovaru. At that point, Sadhguru Gunathan Swami, his power, his, you can say, strength, just by merely looking at a person, he completely melted his inner Karan Sarir, or you can say his inner vicious desires and vicious, you can say, body. Due to that, Valerovaru was looked into the eyes by Gunatinan Swami and Swami asked why are you doing all this? He explained that my brother has taken my property and this is a situation. Well, at that point Swami said there's no reason to do all this. You must realize that this is the wrong path but here's what I'll do for you. In seven days you will get your land back. How so? Well, Swami, he said, Valarovaru said that I don't even know how to count. I'm very illiterate. So Swami said, don't worry. What I'll do is I'll give you a rope and I'll tie seven knots in that rope. Each day, you untie one knot and then when all seven knots are untied, that day you will receive your property. Now Valarovaru, obviously he was a vicious person. He was an evil person, but some enlightenment some kind of spirit arose and he started to have faith in Swami's words. So each and every day, 
he would untie one knot. After the seven days, when he untied the last knot, his brother himself came and gave him his property. Now, this is the works of a true saint. What just happened? Valeru Varu was a very vicious person, but by the association, by just the mere vision of an ekantik Satpurush, like Sadguru Gunatitan Swami, his life completely changed and he became a satsangi, a devotee. This is what the Ekantik Satpurush does. This is his role. This is what he offers to us. But not only that, I'm reminded of another talk of Satyakam. Now Satyakam was the son of Jabal. Now Satyakam had a long wish to study and he decided to leave his home to search for a guru, meaning a spiritual master. There after searching much, he found a guru by the name of Gautam. He was a sage and a well-known guru. He had enlightenment. And the sage, obviously, he came to the ashram and he asked, Satyakam asked that I want to become your disciple. Please make me your disciple. Gautam said that I cannot do so right away. I need to first know your background, who you are, your name. So go back home and ask. So Satyakam went back home and asked his mother. His mother told him that tell him that my name is Jabal and your name is Satyakam and that's all we know. We have no other history of family or anything like that. So Satyakam, after receiving this message, went back to Gautam. He said that, oh great sage, my name is Satyakam and my mother's name is Jabal. That's all we know. So Gautam became pleased just by this mere act. But he said that I will only make you my disciple if you do one thing. And obviously Satyakam was very hungry for Brahmavidya. He was very hungry to become enlightened. So what he did was that Gautam gave him 400 weak cows and told and commanded Satyakam to herd, the, herd these cows to become to make them stronger and to come back with 1,000 cows. Now obviously this task is no small task. And Satyakam, without saying a single word in the faith of his guru, you can say simulated guru, not to be yet, but in the faith of a, a sage, he said, yes, I will do so. And he took those 400 cows and he started to herd them each and every day. He would think of his guru that I want to please my guru. I want to attain the knowledge. I want to attain God. I want to attain enlightenment each and every day and now months and now years. And before he knew it, not only those 400 cows became strong, but he herded 1,000 cows back to Gautam's say, Gautam Sage's ashram. And there, Gautam Sage saw this prestige act and became so pleased upon him became so enlightened upon him that not only he blessed him with Brahmavidya but the Deutas came down and also blessed him with eternal knowledge and his name became known in the scriptures due to his dedication due to his love for his guru and due to his faith in the words of his guru but this message this story what does it prove well, it proves that one needs a guide in one's life in order to receive something. If you want to gain something, you first have to lose something. It's kind of like a compromise. So, you need a guide to attain God. But, if we cannot accept anyone, if we cannot live under someone's commands, if we, if we cannot take a refuge or harbor under someone's you can say umbrella then how can we attain this act it's kind of like I've given this example many many times it's kind of like when it's raining very very hard outside and you don't have an umbrella obviously you're gonna get wet but suppose you have this nice big umbrella and you take it outside then what's gonna happen no rain is gonna fall on you right in the same exact way the Ekantik Satpurush plays the role of an umbrella 
He covers you. He keeps you safe from Maya, from this worldly illusion, only if you stay underneath him, meaning only if you take him as a refuge. And that's when Bhagwan is attained. But if one cannot accept his refuge, if one cannot accept his words, if one cannot accept him as an umbrella, then one is bound to become wet. So what role does that Satpurush play? Number one, his main job is to join one with God. He does it through various methods. I mean, obviously you've been to the doctor before, right? If you've gotten sick, the doctor, you first sit into his office and you, he asks you, what is wrong? You say that my throat hurts, my head hurts. So what is he going to do? He's going to prescribe you with different kind of medications. Not only that, suppose one week goes by after those antibiotics, that medication that he gave you, nothing happened. What is he going to do? He's going to try another method. Meaning, he tries various methods, applies various kinds of techniques to make your body 100% functional, to make your body stamina 100% functional, so that you can live a proper and healthy life. Just like a scientist, what, what does he do? Well, he tries different kinds of experiments. He tries different kinds of solutions to get some kind of results. And after he gets his results, at one time or another, he becomes successful. In the same way, such a saint tries various methods and implies many techniques on that particular person to improve his life, to mold his life, so that he will be liked by Bhagwan himself. So, this is the glory of such a saint. So, the main purpose of this lecture for all of you is that just like how we need a guide in any kind of new field or category we go into, in the same particular manner, we need a guide in our religious life as well. And that is the true saint. And when we receive that guide, we should hold on to him by developing intense affection. We should hold on to him by keeping his each and every word in such a high pedestal that whatever he commands, we can live by. We should keep him in such a manner that not only his words, but even if he is not present, we still feel his presence every so moment in our life that we are unable to do any kind of, you can say, bad or malicious act in our daily life. And when us, such a person holds that saint in such a level that that person himself also becomes like that saint. And when that person becomes like that saint, then he attains God. There is no doubt. So to all of you viewers today, I want to tell you that this is the best possible method for us to proceed, to excel, to become something more in our religious life. Saying that, I want to lastly mention that Winter Workshop is coming up from December 25th to December 27th. Uh, you can register at theswaminarayan.org. It's our website. There's a registration form. There's also a flyer there. You can see it. Please view it. Also share it with your friends. It's always appreciated that there's more help needed to convince or to tell other people about this, you can say, workshop or this, you can say, kids event for the three days. All the facilities will be kept here at Loyada Mandir NJ. All the living arrangements will be provided. So to all of you parents who are sitting there and to all of you kids that are sitting there, I want you to especially look into this on the swaminarayan.org. It's T H E. S W A M I N A R A Y A N dot O R G. Saying this, my humble J Swaminare. Shri Patim Shri Dharam Sarvade Vishwaram Bhakti Dhar Matlajam Pasudevam Hare Madhavam Kesavam Kamadam Karanam Sri Swaminarayanam Nilakantam Bhaje Shri Gansham Rajani Jai.